Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Mind of Reese. So excited to be talking about the concepts of relaxing to receive within your business and your life. But before we do, holy moly, I'm so excited that Inspired Academy is now open for enrollment. I know a lot of you have been waiting since last fall since it last opened it is open now we are in early bird this means you get 333 dollars off so you definitely want to be clicking that link in the bio if you are looking for a tattoo business mastery course where i was teaching my four part four part framework of the visionary mindset aka becoming the one you know, through somatic methodology, crystal clear clarity, attraction and conversion, AKA the art of creating relationships and converting them into soul online clients and automation, how we create time management and support in our business so our business works for us. This is a 10 weeks worth of training and eight weeks of live coaching with me for a tattoo artist looking to structure the entire business for more wealth, impact, community, and freedom. IA really just nurtures the brand as a whole, meaning you as the whole human, because you are the brand. So yes, there will be strategies and structures, one, two, three implementations that you can have, but we really need to understand that it is creating the inner and outer foundations of solidity that can exponentially grow and scale your business for longevity for a lot for a lifetime baby that's what we want six figures and beyond it's gotten an entire facelift this means all the things that I have learned in the last three years that took me from 200,000 to 300,000 to 600,000 dollars a year <laughs> In the last three years, I have updated this to make to so that you can understand all of the methodology that I have learned over these years. So you can see exactly what I have done to create this type of business. So it is so exciting. Oh my gosh. And I would love, love, love to announce that I have a new mastermind that is open. This is my newest container. Visionary Mastermind is a place for visionary tattooers who feel that they have pretty a solid business. So if you're not looking for something that's like foundational, but you already have like a solid take on what's bit on your business, you're just trying to take it to a whole new level, this is for you. This is a tight-knit group of like-minded spiritual tattoopreneurs who have the visions to bring in their biggest dreams to a reality. So you'll be plugged in 24-7 to the type of energy of alignment, collaboration, relationships, and growth being able to collapse time around any questions you have, any obstacles you have that keeps you really inspired, get great ideas every single day, open your creative channels for more flow, and challenging you to rise the leader that you know you're meant to be, walk with people who have done what you aspire to do. This is basically back pocket support for me. Yep, I will pretty much be there right at your fingertips. So this is about having elevated conversations. This is not a training, but in it, You'll get all the juicy things, all of my programs, all of the calls with me, all the social media workshopping and things like this. It's all yours. And this is for open for eight people, eight visionary tattoo artists. Okay, this is where I'm so excited to be opening this up. If you want to learn more about it, go ahead and click the link in the bio. Okay, so those are my two things that are open. I do still have my VIP. I have one slot left. So excited. Just so excited. So I have one slot left. This is definitely my most, my closest container. Where it's just you, me, baby, and the universe. If you'd like to look at that, link in the bio. <laughs> or link in the show notes. But let's get into it, you guys. I am so excited to be bringing you this juicy, juicy um, podcast episode where it's really just comes fully from my heart and super alive for me today. Some really, really crazy things happened today and I was just like, wow, I really relaxed into that to receive it. And I want to teach you guys how uh, this is so beneficial in your business and in your life. So if this is feeling awesome, amazing, inspiring, please share it out. If, if people, if you're like, oh my gosh, someone needs to listen to this, please, please send it out. This is how we create beautiful organic community. I'm super people-centric, so if you have any questions, comments, concerns about anything, DM me. I love you so much. Let's get into the episode. Guys, so welcome back to another episode of The Mind of Reese. Holy moly, I am coming at you live and hot with something that is so potent for me right now. It's 
the idea of relaxing to receive. And this came to me walking my dog on the streets filled with debris and chaos because it is 50 mile winds here in California and it is knocking everything off the trees, everything just, there's so much debris in the streets, it's, it just feels kind of chaotic. But the thing I love about the wind and a lot of people a lot of people that I know have or have heard like don't like wind, which I find really interesting. But the one thing that I absolutely love about the wind is that you just have to really love what is. You know, it, it is what it is. It's the wind. It's going to blow your hair out. It's going to blow everything over. You're going to get upset and mad by the wind. And so what I, what I find so interesting about this concept is that you know, it's like, let the wind be a, another lesson, an opportunity for a lesson in life that life happens and that it is what it is and just to love what is. And then there's no use in fighting it. So you can either have a life filled with fight or a life filled with grace and relaxation and chill and just like, ah, oh, just a vibe. You know, just a vibe. And if we can move through life in this way, how relaxed can you be in life really becomes the frequency and energetic match to all of the things that you desire. Because freedom, wealth, impact, happiness, they all derive from similar frequencies as peace, relaxation, calm, right? That's all we're looking for is that feeling of like freedom, peace, calm as we move through life. And so this is something that the wind, the wind basically tells me and the trees tell me, obviously, as you know me, uh, I do have my affinity to speak with the trees. And this is the first thing that they say is that like, I'm not going to fight it. Yeah, I'm losing my branches, but these are branches I no longer needed, obviously. So I'm just going to roll with what the universe wants for me. And I know that whatever is meant for me will not miss me. You know, I, I'm, it's not gonna miss me. So there's no way that I could fuck up my abundance. So the trees don't look at losing their branches and things like this as loss. They look at this as like, oh, well, what else am I gonna grow in the, uh, you know, in hindsight of this? Like this makes more room, getting rid of all these leaves, dead leaves, dead bark, all this stuff, all this debris all over the streets. But actually what this is doing is just shedding a layer that I obviously no longer need so that I can grow bigger, bolder, you know, in my tree leadership. <laughs> and that's like the conversation I have with trees. And so um, when I look at life, when I look at this like this, it's just like, how can we be so relaxed in receiving all that we, we desire? And this comes from a really beautiful month, and it's still the 22nd as I'm recording this, you know, 2 to 2 where I have literally just gotten off a call with a super potential soulmate VIP one-on-one -on -one client, and we signed. We're good. We're excited. I'm excited. We're excited to work together. It was like we didn't even need the we didn't even need the phone call. All we wanted was just to like set the logistics. What are the dates? What do we do from here kind of thing? And it just became such an easy way. I walked into this meeting so simply and it just literally was just the most beautiful exchange of energy. And this happened also with my tattoo apprentice who just kind of fell from the sky for me. But in all actuality, did they really fall from the sky? You know, we got to look at it this way. And this is the reason why we create content. We create assets. We, these, these pieces of content are assets in collapsing time and getting to know you better. And so as we create these assets, we thinking a business asset is something that's always going to continuously help my business grow in some capacity, you know, it's something that still carries momentum, even as no longer that it's like no longer, I'm no longer looking at it. I'm obviously looking at the next thing. These pieces of content, that's what that is. And so when, when we can look at it like this, when we can be in our energy, be in our highest creative self, clear the conduit that we are as the creative, as the, you know, as the creative, 
because, you know, if you've listened to my other podcasts, I talk about how we are just the conduit of creativity. It's not you that's creative. You're just the conduit. And you, the more that you can clean those pipes out from your limiting beliefs, from the gunk of societal conditioning and all of these things, then you really get to be the channel that the universe, that your soul wants you to be, your inner wisdom wants you to be. It gets to be so fun and exciting and experimental and curious and relaxing and peaceful. Business does not have to be hard. We make it hard on ourselves. We make it hard because everybody told us it was supposed to be hard. And don't get me wrong, I have my own. You know, my the way that I grew up was like, you need to work hard to make money. And that was just the narrative that was always in my mind. And I was like, okay, yeah, I need to work hard to make money. But then when I started to relaxing and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, I, you know, I last month had, a, I think it was like a almost 30K month just by me doing tattoos alone. Um, and that was it. Like, I was like, wow, I almost had a 30K month just doing tattoos. There, had, there was no education behind it. There was nothing else behind it. It was just the tattoos. And then booked out, sold, and that was like, Oh my God, my education started coming in and now this month is going to look like a, gosh, I don't even know. It could look like a 50 or a $60,000 month, like for all I know. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's, that's the trajectory that I'm on. And it's just like, wow, instead of constantly chasing this idea of like what my month should look like, how about I just relax into it, believe in the magic, believe that everything that I'm creating, the assets I'm creating via the content of social media and whatever is is working for me and so I could just relax and I could be like yeah I'm I all the things that I'm creating is working and I don't need to be micromanaging my business to a point where it's constantly on my mind and I'm not actually living my life and if I'm not living my night my life I'm not actually creating stories that I could come back into the social media or into the space where my community is and share things with them and so this is where, when we can just be like, wow, how would it feel if I just was like, yeah, everything's working out for me? How would it feel if I just knew that everything that I created was an opportunity for someone to enter into my orbit, for an, an opportunity for someone in my community to come closer to me, to get to know me better, to realize, oh my gosh, yeah, she's my... She's my artist. I want to get tattooed by her. I will wait for her for however long I need to wait. Or I want I want her to be my mentor. I will wait however long. You know, when people are thanking you for accepting their, you know, for accepting their idea or, you know, their their heart. And, and the, so it's just, it's one of those things where I'm like, holy shit, did, am, what, am, like, I just, this today just became like this, an epic realization that oh my gosh this is it doesn't have to be hard to do business and anything that feels hard is just me trying to micromanage my business by constantly checking back on an art piece that's something like checking back on content checking back in my emails checking if people click the link checking 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 where I can just relax and be like hey I posted this thing in the energy I know that I I am I am the best that I am right now and I'm also the worst that I'll ever be right now so how amazing is that just to relax and to know that knowingness that knowing that I am the best right now that I could ever be but I'm also the worst that I'll ever be like I will never go backwards I'm always moving up and if I can understand that and just know oh man it's it's February 22nd, 2, 2, 2 p.m. right now. Just anybody into angel numbers, I just had to stop that there and just let's, just, let's just look at that as a sign to anybody that's listening to this to just take big fat leaps, relax and receive. <laughs> you know, because like there's oftentimes we don't know you know, how things are gonna work out and instead of it's like, yeah, I don't know what, how things are gonna work out, so how about I just believe that it's going to work out? that everything is working, that all that I'm doing is working, that I don't need to micromanage my business. And micromanaging, I actually spoke about this on Booked Out, my my course on getting booked out. 
um, the idea the, of launching soul soul launching to call in soulmate clients and to get soulmate clients off the fence um, really talks about a lot of micromanaging is like mothering. You're mothering your business to a point where it, the, your business is just getting exhausted of you being all over it, you know, and you're exhausted from being all over it. It's like if you're a parent and or if you have parents that are always constantly being like, no, no, don't do that, do this. No, no, don't do that, do this. It gets it gets exhausting, right? So just think about how your business feels by you mothering it. And mothering is actually a, a very masculine energetic wounded masculine energetic trait so it's really it's one of those things because we're constantly trying to control the outcomes of things we're trying to constantly control what's happening in our life when we really the illusion that we have that we think we're controlling we can't and then when we realize that we don't have control of it we try to gain control over something we can't control so it's like this paradoxical circle of constantly going around and around trying to control something that really you can't control at all and so instead of trying to force the semblance of control over a thing that you can't how about manage the things that you can like your energy like how you're feeling, like the thoughts that are going on in your mind. And this is where I find it so fascinating that business coaches, a lot of them, have this idea that it's all about the strategy, when your energy is the strategy, okay? How I am feeling perpetuates the thoughts that I create and those thoughts perpetuate my reality. They are literally whatever is going on inside of me is happening outside of me. And the moment that I took control and was like, nope, I'm no longer going to become a victim to this. I'm going to manage manage what's going on in my inner world. And don't get me wrong, this, this month has been all up and down. I wasn't totally always relaxed. It was like, oh, the moments I would find myself not feeling relaxed. I was like, oh, wow. And these would be in things that are totally outside of my business. Like, full transparency you know I've been having this very interesting body image issue stuff coming up that I've had for a very long time and a lot of females you know like we're we're young we're told and taught to look a certain way and when we go on social media there are certain things that you get shown and oftentimes for me it didn't it doesn't normally bother me but the moment that it starts to come up I'm like let me shine a light on this because no matter what is going on, this is this is all coinciding with everything in my business, in my life, in the relationships that I have. This body image issue, this idea of what I believe I need to look like, and if I don't, how I shame myself around it. How about I utilize this as an opportunity to really be like, okay, let me shine the light on this. Let me feel through this. Let me see what's happening inside of me. Let me make sure that the parts of me that need to, to do this, need to, you know, shame myself for the way that I look on certain days. And especially if I don't feel good, I'm perpetuating what I look like. So it's like, oh, I'm bloated today. I don't look right. And so it's, it's, this, it's this inner monologue that's happening, the feeling perpetuating the thought and then the thought literally creating my reality. And I'm looking at this from a perspective of let me be the observer of what's happening in, in my own inner workings. And how can, I, how can I, by focusing on this, really help me in all other as facets of my life, right? So the moment that I get really clear on this, and as I'm still working through it, it's, it's something that's been deeply rooted in me since I was a kid. And so it's one of those things when it does come up, I normally just be like, oh, that's not true. Let me tamp it back down. But nowadays I'm like, no, if this is showing up, this means that the universe is offering me an opportunity to alchemize this and process this and turn this into power. And how, and by me doing it in my own inner and in, in my personal life, it affects how I work as a leader in my business life. Because as an entrepreneur, we are the whole brand, as a whole human. It's not just your tattoos. Your tattoos are just the tangible part of the experience that you offer that is you. And so when you look at, oh, if I am the whole brand, then that means me, every part of me, and then everything affects my business and my life. So yeah, my body image issue might not be like logically or with words have anything to do with my business, but it does have a lot to do with the way that I handle things. And if I tamp that 
part of me down? What am I tamping down in the parts of my business where I'm having fear, where I'm avoiding feeling things that is causing me not to up level in the way that I want and causing me not to have the success that I want. And so when I look at this and I'm, I, I take this body image issue and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to focus on this and focus healing myself around this because I know this is going to coincide with my business. And what happens is that this entire time with my therapists and my mentors and all these things, you know, it's like I have people holding me accountable. I also have people helping me walk through this. This is what this is what happens in my VIP containers, you guys. This is this is how close we get. It's like it's about the whole human. It's not just about business and the strategies and the one, two, three. I can give you all the one, two, three strategies, but if you can't find safety within yourself to hold yourself, to walk yourself through these hard things, then I there's no way that these strategies are actually going to work for you. Because you could have all the strategies in the world, a millionaire, a 600K, over half a millionaire brand, me, Reese, could offer you how I did it, literally step by step, and it would not work unless you did this work. This is why I believe so much that it's not just business, it's lifestyle. It's lifestyle business coaching. That's what I do, and that's what I love doing. Because once we can get to the root of the cause of the thing that might be causing you to create decisions based on whatever limiting beliefs, like if I, this body image issue, coming up for me, I started to notice, I was like, wow, I, I realize I, I shirk away whenever my my partner touches my stomach. And he may be thinking like, oh, why um, does she not want me to touch her? Instead, I'm like, oh, I didn't realize I was having like, ooh, like I don't want him to touch my belly in case because it's like in my mind, I feel like I look a certain way because I don't feel good about me my body right now because I ate something bad last night and now I'm going to base all of the decisions and the reactions that I have based around this like oh I don't feel very good because I ate something bad last night and now I don't look good it's just like perpetuating this pattern cycle that I'm creating and how is this affecting my business in other ways where if I don't feel good about myself then I started to notice that like the way I was sitting while I was tattooing, I didn't like the way I felt. And I was just like, oh, so I started to like, like maneuver around and I started to feel like cranky. I, I'm literally telling you an actual example of this happening to me just recently. And I was like, wow, this is affecting my business in so many ways. Because I now I'm not even focused on the tattoo. I'm focused on like my belly and I'm focused on like these, these parts of me. So I became like, I became really aware of what was happening. I was becoming the observer of what was happening in my actual internal world and how it was affecting my external world. And I was like, whoa. So I'm watching this happen. I'm having a lot of compassion for the Reese that feels no good in her own body, in her own physical body. And of course, the first thing I'm trying to think of is like, oh, what do I need to do to feel better? But I know that logically, the only way that I can actually feel better for any length sustainable time is to go in and really do the inner work. Because I could patch a Band-Aid on that shit any day. That's what hacks, tips, tricks are for social media, for business. They're all just patching a Band-Aid over something. It's like, here, post 30 reels a day f for 30 days, and yeah, you'll get a million followers. Like, Sure, but is that sustainable? And is that the kind of growth I want? And we can talk about, we'll talk about <laughs> um, how, what's it called? Going viral actually may be hurting you and not helping you, but that'll be another podcast for another day. And it's just like, do, is that the kind, do I want really, do I really want like all these mass amounts of people or do I want a tight knit group of quality people that are meant for me and that are gonna stick around for the longevity of my business and for my brand and just the journey, the artistic evolution of who I am as a creative and my artistic evolution in my own artwork. Like I want diehard people. I don't want someone that's just gonna be like, eh, yeah, I just wanna be here cause that, that was, you know, you were doing really cool content and then all of a sudden you're no longer doing it because obviously it's no longer sustainable and people are falling off because they're just like, well, you're not, it's not fun anymore for me to watch. That's like mass market pr produce. It's like mass market producing something and I'm not here for mass market. I'm here for the tight knit, niche down, 
you know, soul aligned, transformation, experiential type motherfuckers out there that want to be in my space. Like that's who I am after. And so at the end of the day, if the, if there are certain things that are affecting my, you know, if there are certain things that are affecting my own personal life, I know for a fact it's affecting my business and vice versa. If there are things that are affecting your business, you are obviously taking it out on whatever's going on in your personal life. Like let's say you're super stressed about your business. Oh my gosh. Yet you're trying to find a bandaid to do, to put on it. You put, you listen to these tips, tricks, and hacks. You start posting every single day, whatever, um, however many reels a day, however many TikToks a day. And then all of a sudden you go home and you're super tired. You don't even have any energy for yourself or for your family. And then everybody feels neglected and then you feel neglected and then you go back and you do it over again. I don't want to put a Band-Aid on my business. I want to create something of longevity. I want to create something of sustainability. I want to create something that I know my business is working for me for the years to come. If it takes me a year to really rip up all the foundations of my business and re-put it back together to make it even more solid, I'm going to do it. Because the more solid I can be in that, the that's how I know that it's not going to matter what Instagram is doing, what algorithm is doing, what, what TikTok is doing, whatever new social media that might be coming out. It won't matter because I've already created such inner and outer foundation, solid foundations that nothing can shake me. I find safety within myself. I don't find safety in the outside world. I don't find safety in anything outside of me. And so when things happen, I'm like, holy shit, how did this happen? I didn't even realize because I'm having a holy shit because I'm, I'm relaxing to receive it all. I'm relaxed in my business. I'm just like, yeah, I trust my business is working for me. I trust my business got me because I am the business and I've got me. So at the end of the day, this is where we should be putting all of our efforts in is really creating that foundation. It's really creating that, that is really getting to know yourself. There's like a lot of crystal clear clarity that's really necessary. And I'm not just talking about like, I know what style I do and all of this other stuff. I'm talking about like in depth, knowing your shadows, beliefs, all of the things that make you, you. And then when things come up, not shying away from trying to not look at that thing because, oh, that's not a part of my business and I'm looking at my business. I'm like, no, that is a part of my business. It's going to affect my business. And if I look really closely and I become the observer of this, I'm going to see how it affects my business. And hence the example with the body image thing. Like I, I would have never, nobody could ever have convinced me that my body image would have, would play a part in my business at all. And, you know, then we get really clear and we get really honest and we take radical responsibility. I don't blame anyone for my body image issues. Yes, to have I had experiences where people told me that I look like a whale or <laughs> have managers of acting communities be like, well, you don't look 13 because you're so voluptuous. <laughs> and, you know, like, and then my boyfriend trying to give me a super compliment calling me curvy and I'm like, what? You know, so it's like these little things when they trigger, when they feel like there's, it creates a feeling of dysregulation in your nervous system. If it creates a feeling of fight or flight fawn, you know, if I'm entering into the beta state of my brain where I am hyper-focused on protecting my body because that's my ego being like, I need to protect myself. I'm being triggered right now. Someone, there's something going chasing me. This is something where I need to be like, okay, I need to stop and not react in this moment and I need to understand what's going on. And that for me is the, that's mastery. That in and of itself is just mastery, self-mastery. And self-mastery is business mastery, is marketing mastery. Then from there, you get all the tips, tricks, hacks, strategies, things like this. And you're like, yeah, I got that. I can hold myself through that. I can do that. I'm looking at this in the long game. I'm looking the longevity of this, of my business. I'm looking at this from a perspective of like, I'm, I'm broadening, I'm stretching my time horizon. I'm literally stretching it to a capacity where I know that like, I'm in this for a lifetime, for a legacy. I am a masterpiece in the making. I am a legend. 
You know, I am creating legacies here. Like, this is what I'm doing. I'm not in this for a Band-Aid patchwork. Let me just get the quick fix and get it today and then be have anxiety tomorrow. Like, no. I want to be able to understand how to move through difficult things and difficult feelings because all everything is is based on a feeling. When we are like, oh my gosh, I'm only ma- I've only made this much money. I need to make this much money in order to make rent. Yes, that's a real that's a real problem. It's like a real issue in your business. And yes, and it is very scary, but that's the first thing that happens is you start to get anxiety, the feelings of anxiety. And then when we start to feel anxiety, we start to get dysregulated. And then when we start to hyper-focus and we have this trigger, what is happening within our body? Our body is like, okay, we need to fight or flight. We need to protect the body. So what do we need to do? And then it shuts you off from your straight up into your, you know, logical, analytical survival brain. And it shuts you off from creativity. And so how are you going to create from a space where you're completely closed off to the part of you that makes you the money, right? So when you can lead yourself through these scary situations, the very real scary situations, that is a real scary situation to to feel like you don't know where your money is going to come from and you're not sure if you're going to be able to pay rent. That's That's a real situation. And so it's not not real. It's not something you just made up in your head. But what we can control is the thing that goes on inside of us. And if we close off the creativity within us, then we are closing off the very thing that makes us the money, right? So we see it all the time. We watch, we watch it in all of the movies. Like we see some, you know, really poor people rise to the occasion because they're just like, well, I'm already at the bottom. You know, I'm already, I'm already here. And they just rise because they're just like, I've got nothing left to lose. And I'm going to open, keep myself open to creativity. Now, see, the problem is, is that since uh, we're not that that problem, we we have had moments in our life where we've like had some stability and like you know the illusion of stability from the in an outside perspective, because you know real stability is having real safety within ourselves to know that we've got us. But we've had like oh we've had some good months. So what we're doing is like okay, I'm comparing myself to my past self. That girl over there behind me, she made X amount of dollars this many months in a row. Why is this not happening now? What am I doing wrong? What do I got to do? And then it becomes like an analytical focus, cuts you, off from the, cuts you off from the frequency of abundance and cuts you off from your own creativity, cuts you off from the connection to your inner wisdom because now you're searching and you're grasping at all the things that will help save your physical body because in your body... The feelings you're creating is something that, oh my gosh, it needs to be saved. We need to run. We need to hide. We need to fake dead. You know, we need to do one of these things in order to survive. And so that's, when we can get really clear on the understanding of how our inner workings of our brain works, and then when we can calm that part of ourselves down, we could heal that part of ourselves by shining a light on it and allowing the feeling to feel the feelings. Like, yeah, it's scary. Feel that scary. A lot of people try to run away from that fear. They don't want to feel the fear because it's scary to feel fear. But honestly, once you feel it, you're like, wow, that's actually not as bad as I thought. Yes, it's still scary, but how can I utilize this energy? Because all feelings are as energy and we can process and alchemize it and turn it into power. We could turn it into momentum. And then we can re-remember where we are. Yeah, maybe the girl in the past or the the man in the past, you know, was making consecutive X amount of dollars every month and it wasn't as scary. But now, and I'm comparing myself to that past and I'm freaking myself out because it's not happening now. Where in it have I lost the reason why I was doing this? If one one person, tattooing one person is no longer enough, then you have lost your why. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, something that I talk a lot about in Booked Out and a lot about in Inspired Academy, which is so open for enrollment right now. Like, shameless plug. It's so open for enrollment. We start at the end of March. 
you want this juice, you want to learn all these juicy stuff, you want to get in it, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> so it's like, if one is no longer enough, I have lost my why. And so what I need to do is reconnect to why I am here, why I am tattooing, why I decided to become an entrepreneur. And then from there, feel into the gratitude of that. Like, holy shit, I draw on people for, for, for a living. Get back into my full expression of alignment. Come back down from survival mode, from the survival matrix, and reconnect to my creativity reconnect to my inner wisdom and create from there and you know what your you your inner wisdom the universe the collective consciousness the one that we share it's so fucking intelligent your body is so intelligent it literally tells you if you are open to it if you are so open to it it will literally guide you in the direction you need to go we just cut ourselves off from it because we don't have the trust. We can't surrender the control, the semblance of control that we think that we have. Instead, we're like, no, I own, no, no. I will, I will pretend to believe in the universe, but I don't actually believe that I can co-collaborate. I need to believe what's physical and what's real, what I can see. But see, the thing is, is there is so much magic in believing in the unseen. We need to be the visionaries of our business. And a visionary believes in a future that does not exist yet. As an entrepreneur, this is what you decided to be. You're like, yeah, I'm going to be self-employed, be an entrepreneur. I'm going to literally choose a life that's completely in the unknown because it's all reliant upon me. There is really no stability in that. There's no, there's, you know, there's nothing in that that's really just predictable. But at the same time, you were like, in that moment, when you said you wanted to become a tattoo artist, you realized you're like, well, I don't want a predictable life. But what makes you think that you're going to have predictable outcomes when you've already chosen you don't want a predictable life? And, when we, and if we don't want predictability, we can't take predictable steps. That's the funny thing is that like our journey is not going to be predictable. So you do have to hold on to a vision that has yet come to a reality. You have to hold it in order for you to bring it to you. If you can hold, if you can have the vision, it is real. I will tell you that 100,000%. I constantly in my own practices of meditation am in the quantum, in the quantum reality. And all the quantum reality is frequency. That's all it is. When I go enter into meditation and realize that I am not matter, I am not physical matter, I am more energy than matter, and I can enter the quantum reality from that space and know that I am a thought alone and that everything is created from a thought alone, then there is infinite possibilities in the quantum reality and all I need to do is feel the feelings and think the thoughts that I know I would think if I already had the thing that I so desired and just surrendered into believing that there is this intelligence inside of me and one with all of us in this collective that we all share and we can all tap into and if we would just clear the gunk clear the pathways to that connection then we can call in whatever we want it's infinite possibilities and I'm just going to surrender into the fact that I believe in magic and I'm going to allow myself to relax into receiving and act from a place of alignment. That's huge. And it doesn't come without its hard work. It doesn't come without its uncomfortability. But the moment you taste it once, you'll never go back. I'll tell you that right now. It is way harder <laughs> to be aware than to be ignorant. But ignorance is also a choice. Because in a, in a world filled with knowledge, easy 
knowledge at the t you can just grab at the tips of your fingertips and from a phone from a computer it you it's a choice to not want to be aware anymore so it's really your choice and this is where we will come to a close <laughs> on this beautiful podcast because at the end of the day if you can relax more into your business, you will receive so much more in the way that is easeful, holistic, and balanced. There are a million ways to get to abundance, you guys. And, and it can be the way, like I, I've done both ways. I've done the way of like effort, sleep when I'm dead, Force, push, blood, sweat, and tears, back hurting, hands hurting, you know, carpal tunnel, all of these things. And I've and I've made good money doing it that way, unsustainably, though, because obviously I have my ups and downs. I would get sick very often. My physical body was being wear and tear. And then I've also made massive abundance and success through relaxation through peace through in through understanding who i am the inner workings of me knowing how to hold myself knowing how to change the relationship i have with fear knowing how to walk with my contractions knowing how to shine the light on my shadows knowing how to feel the feelings and being okay with it knowing how to you know come back down and open myself up to the creativity i know that is my inner wisdom and constantly create from that space. Even when things feel wonky and wobbly, knowing how to hold myself, knowing how to find safety within myself, staying in my power, and seeing massive quantum leaps. I was doing so much just to be a tattoo artist and make anywhere from 150K a year as a tattoo artist. It was so much work. But I did it and I was proud of that. I was traveling the world. I was on the television shows. I was doing all the things. But then all of a sudden I was like, I just don't feel good about this. This doesn't, this feels like a lot of effort. And I also feel like I'm not getting better at all the things I want to get better at, which is me, which is my artwork, which is my technicalities, my processes in my artwork. It's my creativity, innovations, my design work. I wanted to get better at all these things, but I didn't have time for it because I was working so hard to, to just, you know, exceed the expectation of what success looked like. And then I ended up exceeding it exponentially when I had offered myself way more peace. And that was a lot of inner work, inner peace, inner wealth. I was rich inwardly before I was wealthy outwardly. And now I am like, whoa, how is it that I'm tattooing, own a shop, you know, I have two VIP clients, I have apprentice, I am an apprentice, I am traveling and doing seminars and educating, plus I'm also tattooing, and I'm opening up a bigger tattoo shop, I'm do I have all these big dreams, how do I even have the capacity or the time to do it? I have it. I have, my capacity to hold things is so much bigger because of how much gunk I cleared out of my system. We don't realize how much energy it takes to not feel our feelings and keep them tamped down inside of us. And then we don't realize how those tamped down feelings create the decisions within our life and perpetuate the outcomes that we have. And so when we can get really clear on this, we can realize that business doesn't have to be hard. It actually gets to be really fun and exciting and experimental. I think that's just the one of the words of the day for me. I heard experimental in my meditation from Source and I had a meeting with my mentor and she was like, we need, you know, you, this is a time for experiment. And I was like, huh, of course you would say that. <laughs> this is literally the universe giving me signs. And the universe is giving you signs all the time, all the time. You're, and we're always trying to figure out, well, that's a good sign, but how? It's like actually the action, the energy 
creates the strategy. The energy creates the how. Just take the just know that at the end of the day, that's where you're that's where you are aligned to go. And that action creates the how along the way. A lot of times I don't have a game plan. And the less I have a game plan and rely on my intuition and know that I've got me to get me through anything, the more things just happen. And I'm like, what? What? No way. This is crazy. How is this happening? You know? And so that's what I want for all of you guys out there. So I hope you loved today's episode. If you did, please tag me. Please share it out with the world. If you feel like someone really needs to hear this, send it to them. Give them the juice. We love the good juicy juice. It's just one of my favorite things is to just inspire you guys to know that there is such a different way to be doing business and it's not the way that we've been taught. And I love you. Thank you.